Hi everyone, we will be getting started in just a moment. Thank you so much for signing on so promptly. We'll just give a few minutes for everyone to start uh, signing in and signing on. So we'll start the presentations in a few minutes. In the meantime, it'd be great to hear from you in the chat with a quick hello, maybe where in the country or the world you're joining us from. Um, kind of get the, cat, the chat going there. And as I mentioned, we will start up in the next minute or so. Thanks so much for joining. Excellent, thanks to those who are popping into the chat so far. Welcome to those who are just joining us. We're just giving a few more minutes for everyone to sign on and sign in. Um, as you join, please feel free to, to say hello and let us know where you're joining us from in the chat and we will get started in just about a minute. Thanks everyone. Okay, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, welcome, and as people sign in, please let us know where around the world or the country you're joining us from. Thank you to Judy for letting me know about the sound issues, so hopefully this is a bit better. Um, we will go ahead and get started. Thank you for everyone for giving us your time uh, this evening. Welcome to our webinar, Devastating Deals, How Groupon Profits from Wild Animal Abuse. I am Cameron Harsh. I am the Programs Director for World Animal Protection US. I'm very excited to um, be here with you and to have the presentations from the campaign managers that will follow shortly. Um, please feel free to continue to use the chat to chat with us during the webinar. There is also the Q&A function where you can ask your questions um, to have them prepped for the Q&A session later on. Next slide. So for those of you who may not be familiar with us yet, uh, we have been around and active since 1950. We were previously known as the World Society for the Protection of Animals until we uh, joined and formed our current iteration of World Animal Protection in 2014. Our work around the world um, centers around 12 different country offices um, and has operations that are effective in 50 different countries. And we focus on animals in farming and animals in the wild. Next slide. Our mission is simple, it is to move the world to protect animals. Next slide. And our vision is a world where animals live free from suffering. Next. So I'm very excited for you all to hear from our two wildlife campaign managers, Nicole Barantes and Liz Cabrera-Holtz, who will be speaking to you about their exciting campaign activities focused on group bonds. So with that, I will pass it over to Nicole. Thanks, Cameron. Hi, everyone. I'm going to introduce our Groupon campaign. Next slide, please. Uh, so we just launched our campaign on Groupon last month. So it's very exciting to have this webinar tonight and share with you all what we're doing. Uh, so as many of you may be familiar with Groupon, uh, they are a global e-commerce company that sells discounted deals on activities, travel, goods, and services. Um, but unfortunately, based on our research, uh, they also sell deals to venues that exploit wild animals for entertainment and profit. Uh, so this includes roadside zoos, petting zoos, marine amusement parks, many of which sell cruel interactions with wild animals. Uh, Groupon is a large travel company. Uh, in 2020, they reported 1.4 billion in revenue and had close to 30 million customers, active customers. Uh, so with its millions of users, the permanent removal of these exploitative venues um, from their site would positively impact thousands of animals. Next slide. Please. <laughs> Uh, so what is our campaign ask? We are urging Groupon to prohibit running these deals, deals that offer the interactions with wild animals and captive wild animal performances. Uh, we're also asking the company to adopt an animal welfare policy 
a public animal welfare policy that protects wild animals and doesn't exploit them. Uh, so next I'm going to introduce my colleague Liz. Uh, Thanks, Nicole. Uh, next slide, please. So as Nicole said, um, first I'm gonna uh, go over some key terms, roadside zoo, pseudo sanctuary, and cruel interactions. And then I'll hand it back to Nicole uh, to talk about a few specific wildlife venues that are doing business on Groupon. Next slide, please. So roadside zoo generally refers to smaller captive wildlife venues where um, animals are kept like in small bearing cages with little enrichment, veterinary care is inconsistent or inadequate. Uh, the food may even be moldy or inappropriate for the species. They may be given putrid water um, and animals are often confined alone, even highly social animals like non-human primates who uh, which is really detrimental to their psychological well being. Roadside zoos are also more likely to sell interactions between animals and visitors. So things like cub petting and swimming with otters uh, or taking selfies with lemurs. Next slide, please. Another term is pseudo sanctuary. Uh, some roadside zoos actually brand themselves as sanctuaries or refuges or like conservation organizations in order to mislead visitors in order to increase ticket sales. Uh, hence the term pseudo sanctuary. But true sanctuaries never allow um, unescorted public visitation of wild animals, meaning people can't just go through and, uh, you know, they might have a uh, sanctuaries, uh, true sanctuaries may uh, and often do allow people to visit, visit the sanctuary and see animals from afar, but the point is not um, for these animals to be exhibited. True sanctuaries also don't engage in captive breeding, except for the rare circumstances where they're participating in a legitimate reintroduction program, meaning those animals are not just being bred for the sake of being bred, those animals will ultimately be reintroduced into the wild. True sanctuaries never purchase animals. They receive animals frequently from other from roadside zoos that are shut down or for whatever reason providing them a refuge, but they don't buy animals. Finally, they never allow contact between guests and wild animals. Next slide. Instead, true sanctuaries strive to replicate the freedom that a wild animal would experience in their wild home. So animal care instead of entertainment is at the forefront. And if you're not sure whether a facility is a real sanctuary, you can check if they're accredited by the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries, uh, which and we'll drop a link in the chat so you can see, uh, and you can check from all over the world whether uh, a, a sanctuaries participating in this accreditation program. And they represent kind of the current gold standard of, of sanctuary care. And they set out really detailed care and operations requirements by species that include um, areas like housing and nutritional requirements and veterinary care. And if you want to learn more about some accredited sanctuaries, um, I would really encourage you to check out two of our recent webinars. Uh, just last week, we hosted Foster Parrots, a bird sanctuary in Rhode Island, to talk about how wild animal sales at stores like PetSmart and Petco hurt animals. And we had primates incorporated um, in the fall talking about the non-human primate pet trade. So, and yep, thank you, Mackenzie. Links to both webinars are available in the chat. Next slide, please. Finally, um, I wanna talk about what we mean by cruel interactions. So venues that offer interactions with captive wild animals use a variety of terms like um, experiences or encounters or meet and greets, uh, but they're all kind of the same. It includes uh, hand feeding, touching, holding, bathing, uh, even swimming with wild animals like otters and penguins uh, and dolphins. But 
these animals, while they appear to be, uh, they might look happy to you, they're either restrained or coerced through abusive training, uh, or they're enclosed in such a small space that they don't have uh, a choice about whether or not to participate. So these interactions are highly stressful and cause suffering. Also, animals quickly age out um, because people have a preference for younger animals or baby animals, and then they're discarded when they're no longer profitable. These interactions are, can be really dangerous for both animals and humans, both in terms of physical injury and then uh, disease, zoonotic disease, meaning when diseases are passed between animals and humans. So now that you're familiar with some of these terms, I'll pass it back to Nicole to discuss some of the exploitative venues uh, using Groupon. Thanks, Liz. Next slide. Yes, so now on to the venues. And just a note that the three venues that we're going to touch upon are just a drop in the bucket of what's happening on Groupon. There are countless more places just like these that Groupon is helping drive more money to and taking a cut of the profit themselves. Um, so first is the Miami Sea Aquarium. Um, Miami Sea Aquarium is a marine amusement park with a laundry list of Animal Welfare Act violations. Uh, the Animal Welfare Act is, a, is the federal law that regulates places like zoos and circuses. Um, but there are a lot of problems with the law. It sets only minimal welfare requirements and it's chronically under enforced, uh, but it does give us a baseline to talk about the venues. Uh, so Miami Sea Aquarium can't even meet these minimal requirements. So it's been cited for issues, including inadequate veterinary care, structurally unsound facilities and inappropriate housing of marine mammals that resulted in injuries and death. Uh, so on the slide is their most notable resident, Tokute, also known as Lolita, a female orca, is held without orca companionship in what is re reportedly the smallest tank in the world. Um, they also have a, a history of, of animals dying at the venue. Um, so five dolphins and an infant sea lion died between 2019 and 2020. Indigo, a bottlenose dolphin, was uh, found dead at the bottom of a tank from acute trauma and pulmonary shock. Echo, another bottlenose dolphin, was found dead after suffering uh, acute neck trauma. Um, so the venue runs daily dolphin and sea lion performances. They offer swimming with dolphins and seals, as well as penguin and dolphin interactions. So regarding dolphins in captivity, um, they're used in performances. They endure a, a lifetime of cruelty. Uh, they're routinely deprived of food as part of their training process. Uh, they're made to breed and then separated from their calves. Uh, they're subjected to loud crowds of people and used as props and photo shoots or even worse as, as surfboards. Um, and of course, they're kept in tanks many thousands of small, many thousands of times smaller than their natural habitat. Uh, so next, we'll talk about another venue that also happens to be in the Miami area. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so next is the Zoological Wildlife Foundation. Uh, so despite its name, this is not a conservation organization. So this is a roadside zoo owned by Mario Tabro, uh, known from Tiger King. Um, so this menu offers extensive interactions with big cats and other wild animals. So again, chronic Animal Welfare Act violations, including failure to provide adequate veterinary care, um, unable to handle animals properly and not maintaining a plan for the psychological well-being of the non-human primates at the facility. Um, so they sell interactions with the big cat cubs and non-human primates, sometimes for hundreds of dollars for a few minutes. And many of these interactions have resulted in bites um, and injuries. Uh, for example, in 2021, a guest was bitten by a lion cub. A chimpanzee bit a child in 2020. A teenager was bitten um, by a tiger cub and required stitches, and the list goes on. Uh, so next slide, please. So finally, we have Sequest. Uh, Sequest is a chain of interactive aquariums, petting zoos with a litany, again, of Animal Welfare Act violations. I think we're all seeing the pattern. Um, and unfortunately, animal deaths and human injuries. Uh, so. Um, animals have been drowned, uh, kicked, crushed, and burned to death. Uh, Jelly, an otter, drowned after her arm was trapped in a filtration system in a tank. Uh, two sloths, both named Flash, uh, 
passed at the same location within a nine month period after exhibiting weakness, twitching and diminished appetite. This was at Sequest Las Vegas. Um, and then in a, at another venue in Sequest Littleton in a single summer, a guest kicked five birds to death and two kookaburros died, one drowned in a water bowl um, while another choked on a toy. Um, so we could have an entire webinar on Sequest. The incidents listed here are just a small sampling, unfortunately. Um, so we anticipate this will keep on happening until the company is shut down. Uh, so next slide, please. Now, I know I've shared a lot of not so great things to hear, uh, but the good news is we will now talk about how you can help our campaign and how you can help move Groupon to stop supporting these exploitative wildlife venues. We've come up with a variety of ways for you to help, so I'm sure there'll be something here for everyone. I'm really excited to, to speak on this part. Um, so next slide, please. So. Uh, one of our opportunities with our campaign is we are actively looking for social media volunteers, so specifically Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So on Twitter, on the second Thursday of every month, uh, from 11 a.m. to 11.30 Eastern Time, we're running a twi uh, tweet storm to amplify pressure on Groupon. Uh, we provide sample tweets and images. Uh, we had our first tweet storm on National Dolphin Day, which was earlier this month on April 14th, but our next one is on May 19th. Uh, so Mackenzie, who's been uh, dropping the links in the chat, by the way, she's a great campaign assistant. She's um, going to be dropping all the links uh, for um, for you all to sign up. And on the form, uh, you can indicate which platform you'd like to sign up for. Oh, excuse me, I forgot to say about Facebook and Instagram. So we're also doing looking for volunteers on these two platforms. Uh, so similar to Twitter, but we will be announcing random days to post mass comments on, on their account. So really just um, get, um, what is the term? Just get, I'm blanking out. Um, get the social media managing team like by surprise. Um, so next slide, please. Um, so next is some general volunteer opportunities. So we are looking for to recruit college students for the campaign. So we are going to run a campaign action in the fall that will be specific for college students to take. Uh, so as a tech company, Groupon leadership depends on their talent pool for success and what students, their future talent have to say about Groupon's failure to protect wild animals um, will surely influence them. Uh, so if you know any college students, please share the form that's in the chat uh, with anyone that you know. So uh, we're also planning in-person demonstrations in Chicago. Uh, Groupon is based in the city um, to, again, build pressure on Groupon. So if you live in Chicago, if you know anyone that lives in the Windy City, yes, sign up for a future demonstration or get your friends um, and family to sign up. Next slide, please. So um, we are very interested in, in get, hearing other people's ideas. Um, so if you have any thoughts on how else we can move Groupon, uh, let us know in the link. We love learning um, new ideas on how we can make a positive impact for animals. Also, share with us your connections. So if you know someone that works in Groupon, if you know someone that works in tech in Chicago, uh, this we're looking for um, so we can learn more about the tech community in the city and if they know can if they know someone that works at Groupon, et cetera. Um, if you know of any Chicago related events where we can table and spread the word because a big part of what we'll be doing in Chicago is recruiting volunteers and if you know any great events. Um, so yeah, let us all know in those forms that we're sharing in the chat. So last is um, to share our activist toolkit uh, with friends and family. So I'm very happy to announce this. We developed an activist toolkit for the campaign that sums up everything that we spoke about um, in this webinar and how you can help and get involved. So Mackenzie just shared that in the chat. So download that and you'll be able to see um, how you can get involved more. Next slide.
Great. Thank you so much, Nicole and Liz. A lot of exciting work underway and exciting work to come and a lot of great opportunities for others to engage in your campaign. So I'll definitely invite you both to turn your cameras on um, as we enter into the Q&A section. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, there is the Q&A window down at the bottom in which you can enter any questions that you may have for Nicole or Liz. Uh, feel free to also use the chat. Uh, but to start out, uh, kind of top level question, perhaps for Nicole, have you received any response or engagement from Groupon since starting this campaign? Yeah, so at the moment, we have not received a response from Groupon. So before launching the campaign, we sent email notifying them about our research and if we can work together to develop an animal welfare policy. But as of today, they have yet to respond to our outreach. Thanks, Nicole. Um, and a question for Liz, uh, with all of these violations that were uh, given as examples, even just from these three venues, what would it take to shut down some of these cruel exploitative venues? Does it come down to money, politics? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, that's a great question. Um, and you know, tonight's webinar is, is intended to be a shorter webinar talking about the Groupon campaign, but it touches on so many issues that could really, you know, we could speak about for hours. Um, I think a lot of it comes down to politics and legislation. So the law that regulates zoos, like including roadside zoos and pseudo sanctuaries and circuses um, and any facility that exhibits animals is called the Animal Welfare Act. And it was passed in 1966. And it's the primary federal law in the United States that's, that's supposed to protect animals. Uh, it also regulates animals used in research labs and breeders like puppy mill operators, for example. Um, Unfortunately, unsurprisingly, it has major problems. First, it only sets minimal welfare requirements, meaning that there aren't strong protections in the first place. Second, it has a terrible track record of enforcement. It's supposed to be enforced, or it is enforced by the US Department of Agriculture, uh, but it's really unusual for a bad facility to be shut down. Um, instead, these facilities just rack up a bunch of violations and not much happens. Finally, it excludes huge groups of animals, including um, reptiles and amphibians and birds, though that's about to change for birds. Um, so that's why we continue to see these facilities operate. And it's only when um, an animal protection group steps in and files a lawsuit or does something else um, that we see facilities be shut down. It's pretty rare for the USDA to shut them down. Um, but there's a couple of things you can do. And, uh, the first is I would encourage your congressperson to sponsor and support the animal welfare enforcement improvement. Um, the other thing you can do is, is obviously not to support these places and to encourage friends and family not to support them as well. Thanks so much, Liz. Uh, you mentioned, yes, that this is a, a campaign very much focused on Groupon. So a uh, question for Nicole, um, what about campaigns targeting some of the venues themselves or travel companies that are complicit in this uh, exploitative industry as well? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, if you can uh, just speak to um, any campaigning activities that might be underway against specific venues or looking at travel companies that might also be involved in perpetuating this industry. Yeah, of course. Um, so we, aside from the Groupon campaign, we are looking at tactics uh, to move the Miami Sea Aquarium. I was just in Miami last week, uh, earlier this month for National Dolphin Day. Um, so. I'm happy to share more information for those that are interested about that. Excellent. Thanks, Nicole. Um, there's a couple of questions in the chat and in the Q&A about who we're, we're partnering with on a campaign like Groupon, um, other organizations, stakeholders, perhaps on the ground, um, perhaps for either of you to answer. 
Yeah, I'm happy to. Um, yeah, working with other groups is very important for us with this campaign, um, considering we are based in New York. I mean, most of us are based in rent in different cities across the US, um, but I'm not based in Chicago. So one group that we are working with is the Chicago Alliance for Animals. It's a great advocacy group uh, based in the city. And we are working together to recruit volunteers and we will get involved with them uh, when we run our offline actions in Chicago. Great, thanks, Nicole. Um, have you considered launching a boycott against Groupon? It is a tactic that's in our um, that's on the table, and we will look at reviewing that in the in the next six months. Excellent. Um, yeah, a lot of great questions continuing to come through in the chat and the Q&A. Um, continuing on the theme of tactics, there's a question in the chat about discussion around peaceful protesting and campaigning on specific days. Um, if we keep the focus on group on, Nicole, maybe you can speak to tentatively plans that you might have around um, targeting group on in its home city of Chicago. um yeah thank you yeah i see the i see the the question so um we are looking to run an in-person demonstration in chicago towards the late summer early fall so ideally like august and september until then we are looking at um, tactics that we can roll out during the summer um, which is we're discussing, but it can be a, a combination of postering and, and stenciling, like street stencils around the city, just looking at different ways that we can disrupt Groupon and just catch them off guard and put like um, just public pressure on them and, and, uh, and challenge their brand image. Uh, so we're going to be looking at these tactics to roll in the early summer and then um, use that time to recruit people and volunteers and hopefully have a really good uh, in-person demonstration in um, August or September. Excellent. Thanks so much. Um, I see too, kind of thinking still on the theme of campaign tactics, uh, Jewel has put in where interested supporters can send campaign ideas that they have on their own, which of course, if they're on the webinar, they can add them into the chat. If you said, Nicole, um, is there a way that people following the webinar could continue to share their own campaign campaign tactics and ideas with us? Yeah, hopefully you can all see the toolkit that was added in the chat. And then there is um, on the yellow pages, there is a form that you can see that it'll say share your campaign ideas, click on that, and you can add your idea and we um, can stay in touch and ask you any questions about your idea. But we're very open to different, to different tactics because um, every campaign is different. So we always have to be very creative with how we um, eventually win these campaigns. Excellent. That seems like a good kind of wrap to a really robust q and A. I I really appreciate all of, of the participation and the great ideas that are uh, being shared in the chat. Um, maybe we can open it up to Liz and Nicole for any final words or final thoughts for the session. Uh, sure, yeah, I would just add, yeah, I really appreciate everyone's engagement in the Q&A, and I would encourage you to please reach out to us, even if you don't have a specific campaign idea, but you just want to learn more or learn about volunteering or learn how World Animal Protection uh, works on various campaigns. We're, we're always really happy to talk with people. Yeah, thank you for joining. In the toolkit, you'll see on one of the final pages is our email address if you want to contact us. It's programs at worldanimalprotection.us. Thank you both. And yeah, I was just going to ask for next slide. So just um, to address some other questions that were coming up, there will be an email sent after the webinar that will include the activist toolkit and some other links to some of the resources we have shared. Uh, we also certainly ask that you share the recording of this webinar with your friends and family so they can see the great work that we're up to as well. 
And of course, there is that QR code if you are willing and able to support with a donation to help our work and help these campaigns. So again, thank you for much. Thank you so much for giving your time this evening and listening to these presentations and sharing your ideas. And we look forward to seeing you on future webinars. Thank you so much. Have a great night.